Good morning everyone, it's Mark Weens in Bangkok. Right now I'm on my way to meet a guy that I have been connecting with online for a couple of years and he is in the travel industry in Germany. So going to meet him now for a coffee and then after that I'm going to meet Ying. Ying has already been out today. Uh, she went with her sister earlier in the morning to the Taiwan Embassy uh, to get a visa for her sister because uh, her sister is joining us on our next trip for a few days uh, and we are heading to Taiwan but that's coming up in a few weeks so I'll let you guys know more about that. I'm getting off the BTS at Sapan Taksin Station and I'm gonna go meet Tom on the river. Just a short walk from here. Tom. Good morning. <laughs> nice to meet you. How are you doing? Very good. Nice to meet you too. Nice to meet you. Nice t-shirt. <laughs> I know, got four of them. <laughs> We're on our way now to a coffee shop here in Bangrak. This is a vendor selling mangoes and durians on a tree, on a, on a food cart. That is a beautiful cart. We just came to True Coffee, which is sort of the Starbucks of Thailand. I met up with Ying and now we are walking back towards the river and going to take the boat. Okay. So, it was nice Tom. meeting you. Nice to meet you. Stay in contact. Thank you. That was a very good meeting with Tom. Uh, nice to meet you, Tom. And now Ying and I just jumped on the, the public river taxi on the Chao Phaya River. Taking the river boat is one of the best ways to get around Bangkok, so you don't have to sit in the traffic, and you've got the river breeze and also good views on both sides of the boat. Right over there is Wat Arun, but they are doing some construction on it. You can see all the scaffolding. jumped off the boat at Ta Tien Pier. Okay, right off the boat station, the pier at Ta Tien. It's a famous place to buy all kinds of snacks, especially uh, dried squid, which is Ying's favorite snack in the whole world. So Ying is just stopping by to buy some bamuk. Ying, what type of squid is it? Bamuk hang, mate. Bamuk kob. Bamuk kob. Oh yeah, I can smell that. And Ying is buying a family-sized pack for her whole family. <laughs> Gotta taste test the squid. Mm. It's a little bit on the sweet side, but is it, it's extremely crispy like a cracker or a chip. We are just passing by Wat Po, which is one of the most famous temples in Bangkok. Before we do anything, we just stopped at a restaurant that we just passed because Ying is very hungry. 
and I could definitely eat too. And Ying also got Gui Diao, uh, which are soup noodles, which are still coming. But this one is um, stir-fried Chinese long beans with crispy pork. And then this one, what is this? Is it corn mu? No, it's mu pad pig pao. This is some kind of pork stir-fried with chili, sweet chili sauce. And then this one is geng zhe mara, which is uh, soup boiled and with uh, bitter gourd, bitter melon. Ying's bowl of gui diao has just arrived uh, with chicken and served in a, like a cartoon bowl. Anytime at a Thai restaurant where you are served with these type of Chinese spoons, you know it is an old school restaurant. Let's start with the, the mu pat pig pao. Oh, that's good stuff. It has a kind of a salty, almost a fruity chili flavor to it. Oh, that's really good. Okay, try some of this and just just look at the crispiness of that piece of pork belly. I can just feel that rattling around in my spoon. It literally, I'm sure it's just a, an entire crispy chunk. Okay, mix that in with a little bit of rice and all right. Oh, that is delicious. Maybe she's using sea salt, I think. Um, and then basically that's just stir fried in oil. Outrageously crispy pieces of pork belly and then really crisp long beans. They're like green beans, but more crisp. And then the gengju mara. And there's some kind of, there's pieces of pork in here as well. That is fantastic. That bitter melon just kind of disintegrated in my mouth. It's really softly stewed, and then that's just a salty, slightly bitter broth, pork-based broth, uh, but just excellent flavor. Actually, everything here. It looks just really simple and really basic, but it's this is some old-school cooking and extremely good flavors. These stir-fried Chinese long beans with crispy pork is insanely good. It's so simple, but the flavor is so good. Okay, it is a little bit oily too, but you can see it's not stir fried with any oyster sauce or soy sauce like it sometimes is, but instead you can you can see those little grains of salt. And I guess I believe it's sea salt, but some type of really good salt um, has a fantastic flavor, salt flavor. What you say? That was an incredible lunch, really good food, and that was just unplanned. We just walked past it and were hungry and needed some lunch, so that turned out extremely good. And the lady, the owner, who was a, who was a true grandmother, uh, is, is, she said she cooked all the food, and so that was extremely delicious, and that is old school Thai Chinese food. And right now we are just walking through a market, uh, Market Street that's just next to where we just ate. We are walking over to a place called Ban Bad, which is where they make uh, monk ambles. And it's a place I've been wanting to check out, but have never been had a chance to go there yet. So that's where we're headed. And it should be very close to Wat Saket, which is the temple, the Golden Mount Temple. King, be careful. Okay, so we've arrived to Ban Bad, and this is where they make the monk ambles. Um, and it's a very traditional, traditional way how they make it, which is a very uh, ancient and dying art, so this is a very hard thing to see. They don't do it by hand very much anymore. This place is basically just a shed on the corner of the road underneath a tree and underneath a, a shelter. Uh, in Thai, a bat is a monk alms bowl. So when you see monks walking around in the morning and um, receiving food, that is the type of bowl that they are using. 
uh, but this is the only place, at least he told us, this is the only place in Bangkok where they are still making the traditional version of these monk uh, bowls. So there are many places where they mass produce them, uh, but this is the only place where they are making them handmade and where they are made purely according to tradition. Okay, he said I can give it a try pounding the, the bowl. Now we're just taking a walk down the street and gonna try to check out Ban Bat, Soy Ban Bat, which is just down here and into the neighborhood a bit where they, I hope they're still making bowls down down the street and in the neighborhood, but we'll see. Okay, here is a sign for the the Ban Bat community. And this street down here is called Soy Ban Bat. Oh, here's the Monk Bowl Ban Bat community. Okay, cool. We are in the right spot. These are these are monk bowls. And I think this is the Ban Bat community right in this in this lane here. Oh yeah, I can see a lot of workshops now. We're walking through these narrow lanes of this neighborhood and we got a little lost so they have some nice people have directed us into the right way but you can really get lost back in these walking streets but these little walking soys in the back lanes of Bangkok are my favorite places to explore. So they said that the bowls are made from eight strips of metal, which are all, you can see they're fitted together with uh, like little rivets, and then they are welded. So you go up. <laughs> they are welded and then pounded until they are smooth. Oh, so he's getting ready to weld right now. Oh, I can actually feel the heat coming off that. The guy we saw welding the bowl was a really nice guy, and he said that making the bot, there are nine steps. So the first step is maybe cutting the metal, I'm not sure, and then putting the metal together. And he was doing step number th three, which is welding welding the pieces together before they get pounded. From what I can pick up, it seems that all the different um, houses in this community, or different families, they all do different jobs with these bowls. And so one family kind of puts them together and one family um, does the welding that we saw. And then this family that we are at right now, he's explaining to us that this is the final step in making these alms bowls. I believe they do some of the painting and decoration, which is the final step before they are ready to be sold or ready to be used. So you can visit the, the bot place on, in the front, but then walking through this community is definitely the highlight of visiting Ban Bat. They are happy for you just to look and watch them as they make the alms bowls, uh, but you can also buy the alms bowls. Um, they have them for sale as well if you want to buy them when you are there. It's a type of place that you could easily just walk past without even knowing it is uh, what they're making or without even knowing that it is uh, a well-preserved Thai traditional uh, shop for making alms bowls, and they're really nice as well. So thank you to Ban Bat. Um, that was a great place to see and very interesting. We are now walking back to the main road uh, towards Democracy Monument and we're gonna catch a bus back home from there. So that's the plan right now. Uh, Democracy Monument is right down that way. Khao San Road is not too far away and this street is called Kanon Din Sa. Seeing about a lot of kanoms, a lot of snacks. <laughs> we're at Democracy Monument now and we gotta cross over to the other side of the street to catch the bus. <laughs> okay, and run! You gotta run. 
The bus system in Bangkok is actually quite extensive and quite good. The bus will cover you everywhere in Bangkok and through all the suburbs everywhere. Uh, and it's very cheap and pretty safe. Uh, and uh, yeah, I like taking the bus in Bangkok. Okay, that is our bus right there. Ha Nung Nung, which is 511. Park Nam. We got on the bus. The AC feels really good right now. Uh, that was a good trip though, and I really enjoyed Ban Bat. Uh, seeing them make those alms bowls as well as that lunch was also superb that old-school Thai Chinese food um, Heading home now I want to say a big thank you for watching this video this Bangkok vlog Please remember to give it a thumbs up uh, Leave a comment below if you have any questions or anything to say I'd love to hear from you and thank you very much for watching this video. See you on the next vlog